Hello, church family. Love you. Hope that um, you guys are doing well, um, both just in general, but also in your walk with the Lord. I, I pray and hope that God is moving in your lives and through your lives, that he's meeting you in special ways throughout the week, um, and that you're really getting to see how great, how amazing, how awesome our God is. Um, what I would like to do today is I would like to, to talk about um, something that we all struggle with, something that we all face, and that's the idea of overcoming sin in our lives, um, and more specifically, overcoming temptation in our lives. So what I want to do today is I want to focus on just one, one small passage of Scripture found in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 10, verse 13. And it says this, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But you are tempted. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So what I want to look at today is I just want to take a look at this verse section by section and just break down how we overcome temptation in our lives. The first thing that I want to point out is that that temptation is a normal human experience. There's not one of us that hasn't been tempted. There's not one of us that won't continue to be tempted. It, it's, a, it's a normal experience um, for, for humans, for us, um, especially when we're walking with the Lord. Because when you're doing well in your walk, when you're doing well in your relationship with Jesus, that's, that's when the enemy is going to come at us, come at you the most. Um, so temptation is a very common problem, a very common thing in the lives of believers. Um, the second thing that we see in the verse is that God is faithful. Um, that's, that's such an amazing promise, that God is faithful. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, it says this, God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, it says that if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Scripture makes it clear that, that, that God is faithful. That's who he is. Faithfulness is a defining characteristic of who God is, and that God will always be faithful. There's not a moment in our lives, a moment that's going to come where God isn't faithful to his people. Um, God is faithful, the creator of the universe, the one who placed the stars in the sky, the one who ultimately came from heaven to earth to die for our sins. That God is faithful in our walk with him. The second thing that we see is it says that we will not be tempted beyond what we can bear. And the first thing I want to point out about that is that it, it doesn't say beyond what we can bear on our own or in our own effort. That's not what it's talking about here. But what it's talking about is, is that we won't be tempted beyond what we can bear as we walk in our relationship with Jesus. This does not mean that we can, that we can bear or on our own effort but instead, we can bear as we walk and live in relationship with Jesus. The ability to bear and overcome temptation is found in the God we serve and the Holy Spirit that lives in us. And that's so important to remember that the ability to overcome temptation in our lives is something that rests in the work and in the person of Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit that lives in us. It's not something that we have on our own. And that's significant to remember because of what, what's coming up next. And it says this, But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So the promise is, is that temptation's going to come. But when temptation comes, God is faithful. And he won't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear as we walk in relationship with him. And that when we're tempted, that there is always a way for us to overcome, a way for us to, 
to not fall into temptation. There's a way out so that we can stand up under it. What an amazing promise we have. I just want to draw your attention to a few more passages of Scripture that talk about this. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 and 12, Paul tells Timothy this. He says, But as for you, O man of God, flee these things, and just before this was a list of sin, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness, fight the good fight of faith, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In James chapter 4, verse 7, it says this, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. I think a lot of times in our lives when we're struggling with sin or we're struggling with a, with a particular sin, our idea of trying to handling, handle it is to just try to avoid it altogether. You know, try to avoid temptation, try to avoid, you know, the sin altogether. And we focus solely on avoiding the issue or avoiding the temptation or avoiding the sin. And what Paul's getting at here with Timothy and what James is getting at is that our fleeing from sin, our fleeing from unrighteousness, isn't a fleeing without aim. And what I mean by that, I think of, I think of horror movies when, when I think of this. Because at that moment where the, the villain enters the scene, the, the victim begins to run through the woods no idea where they're going, no idea with, with what direction they're going. They're just running without aim. And the reality is, is that at some point, the villain catches up with them. The villain catches up with them. And I think a lot of times that's, that's how we flee from sin in our lives. We, we flee from temptation. We flee from, from sin, but we do that without any real aim. And what Paul is saying here and encouraging us to is that when we flee, it's not just running from sin, but it's running to God. It's running to our source of righteousness. It's it's running to our source um, and our ability to overcome. It's running to God, and in turn, as we run to Jesus, as we run to the Holy Spirit, as we run to God, we naturally flee the things that we should be running from. So what I want to encourage you with today is this, is first, temptation is normal. It's something we all experience. It's something we all go through. Second, God is faithful. He'll always be faithful. He'll he'll never be unfaithful. It's only in his nature to be faithful. We won't be tempted beyond what we can bear as we walk in relationship with Jesus. So when temptation comes, we can stand up and know that it's something we have the ability to overcome because God promises that that we have the ability to overcome it. And lastly, it's the reality that God always, when we're faced with temptation, provides a way for us to overcome temptation and not sin. And part of that process is running to Jesus, running to God, running to the Holy Spirit. And in a very real sense, in the moment when temptation comes, when we're tempted with something just taking a minute and stop and praying or taking a minute and thinking about a verse that we have memorized or taking a minute and just getting into God's word and consuming God's word, God's presence in that moment when temptation hits. And I think that as we do that, God will be faithful to bring us through temptation into godliness into holiness, into a healthy and flourishing relationship with Him. 
And also, I think another key thing is to be pursuing Jesus even when temptation isn't present. To be actively investing in our relationship with him so that when we meet temptation, when temptation comes, we can hear and discern the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives and know what way he's providing for us to overcome. So I want to encourage you this morning. Temptation is normal, but sin doesn't have to be. Our our Savior came and He died to provide us the ability to live as overcomers of sin in our lives. So I just encourage you guys with that word today. God is faithful. We serve an awesome and amazing, a huge God that can do amazing things And he desires to work and to move in our lives. So I just want to encourage you guys this week, um, live, live in godliness. Live in the presence of God. Live in step with the Holy Spirit this week. I love you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. And I hope that God is moving. Um, radically in your lives, moving mightily in your lives. 